All right, so I've got something new for you. It's quite interesting. I did a few new things here, and uh, it's something that I've planned to do for many, many years. Um, it's not new to me right now because it takes me so long to get these videos up. So I built it a few months ago. I've been playing it ever since. First of all, I'm going to show you this picture. You should see it on the screen right now. And I want you to ask yourself if you've ever seen this picture before. If you've ever seen this guitar in the picture before. Not in person. Most likely you would have never been lucky enough to see it in person. But did you see this photograph? Now this photograph was a fold-out in, I believe, uh, the, the September 1982 edition. 1982 edition of Guitar World magazine. What exactly were you doing in 1982 in September of 1982? Do you remember where you were? How old were you at the time? And what music were you listening to? What were your dreams? What mistakes were you making at the time now that you look back on it? And I got that magazine. I actually, I think I have the original copy of that magazine still uh, stored away somewhere, which I'm going to find. As you can see, you see a double neck in that picture, but it's not the double neck that you do know. It's not the so-called Jimmy Page style. SG style Gibson double neck that everybody knows. Now this instrument preceded it. And what was really interesting is that this was made from 1957 to 62. And in 62 the Jimmy Page style solid body SG double neck took over but as you can see this already has an SG shape to it and this SG shape Gibson already had in 1957 so that tells you something that I think the SG officially came out in 61 the SG guitar 6061 <coughs> more likely 61 but they already had the shape as early as 57. And this particular instrument, what really makes it cool and what really intrigued me, I mean, this is what you call an organic instrument. I recently left a message on a uh, YouTube video from a store that deals in vintage instruments and all these people are gawking at whatever instrument vintage instrument they were highlighting in that video and oh, blah, 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 whatever and I said to them well you know pretended to be naive and I said um, what exactly makes people gravitate towards vintage guitars and I have no indication that I got any reply to that interestingly enough have you ever asked yourself that same question? Have you ever wondered? Do you have the answer to that? What exactly do vintage instruments offer? What is it? Oh yeah, there's all this hype and they're supposed to, what, sound better or play better or... And then there's the... Uh, um, investment factor you know a lot of people buy it because they buy it for X amount of dollars and then they hope to sell it for double that or whatever 10 years later or whatever the heck it is to, you know uh, they're not even players or they're players but they don't play the instrument that's the wrong reason but but what exactly as a player 
if vintage instruments were not worth any more than any other instrument, why exactly would you play a vintage guitar? Have you thought of that? And if you're going to say that they sound better, okay, or that they even play better, that's pretty much bullshit. You would be wrong. You'd just be regurgitating the marketing that so-called vintage dealers and people that, you know, were the snake oil salesmen. The, the, the rhetoric, uh, the narrative of these shysters, you'd be regurgitating that that's been put into your head. What is the real reason that you would not play these highly accurate, highly precise, perfection computer technology, CNC, computer numerically controlled. Everything is programmed in and they press a fucking button, button and out come. Eight necks at a time, eight bodies at a time, everything drilled in exactly, exactly the right spot within tens of thousands of an inch or millimeters. Why the heck would you rather play a vintage instrument? Did you ever Ask yourself that question. Do you have the answer? Give me the answer. I asked a question. Now answer my question. Let's call them products available now in the guitar industry for $279. Beautiful glossy paint. Flamed wood underneath. Humbucking pickups. Floyd Royce Tremolo. Whatever. $279. $479. Even if you're a total failure and have no money, which is not your fault. In this day and age, that's the way society is designed to impoverish you. But you can afford these things very cheaply. In fact, I get inquiries all the time saying, Oh, I like that guitar. I want to buy it. What's your price? And I tell people, Well, uh, the base price of every instrument I make is 2,500 US dollars. And that's the last I hear of them because they've been conditioned that the price of a guitar is shouldn't be really more than two hundred and seventy nine dollars and it's got to be glossy and shiny but why would you not choose that and rather choose a vintage instrument That's the question. When you've got every reason to choose that $279 or $379 or $679 amazing creation of modern technology. Why would you bypass that well a lot of you wouldn't but some may very few these days do of course things were very different in the past when before the new norm became the norm but there is a reason why 
you cannot save money buying a guitar. And it cannot be about price. There is another factor which is priceless. Do you know what that is? Why would you bypass that and play a vintage instrument? Think about it. But what vintage guitars offer you, they don't offer you precision. They don't offer you consistency. Which everybody is so excited about. Oh, I want precision. I want precision. Fuck you. Are you precise? Another very important factor for a lot of people, they have no idea why. They're just regurgitating their indoctrination. That, that is uh, consistency. Which means that a thousand guitars in that batch, in that run, better be absolutely identical or you'll flip out consistency no individuality nothing special about your particular instrument that's what you want think about it every instrument i make is unique so of course you get one of these cookie cutter mass produced instruments and what is the first thing you do well you gotta you gotta mod it why because you want to add a little individualism to you you want to give it some identity that's how fucking sterile it is but it's precise and it's consistent oh yeah Anyway, vintage instruments were none of that. None of that. Uh, so they don't offer you precision. They don't offer you consistency. And they don't offer you even durability because the nitrocellulose, the real stuff, nitrocellulose finish doesn't give you uh, durability at all. That's why these things relic themselves. So what exactly does the inaccuracy, inconsistency, and the fragility of human fallibility give you in a vintage instrument? I, I don't think most people know this. They don't, they're too ignorant to know this. They're just going with the we well, you know what is popular you know they, they you know if, if they're if they're brainwashed into saying that you know what's cool to have is a vintage instrument because so-and-so has a vintage instrument and so-and-so has a collection of 400 vintage instruments and 400 vintage amplifiers uh which is joe bonamassa uh that's what you gotta have but people have no fucking idea why that's how stupid they are Obviously, I would have had 203 replies to my question. It was an honest question. It was a simple question. So, I'm going to tell you. Vintage instruments offer you one thing. But it's a huge thing. And it's something that these modern mass-produced, machine-made, CNC-made plastic coated deep fried abominations regardless of price if they're 279 or if they're four thousand dollars and 79 cents the one thing they will never give you what is it? Because you got to understand that the $279 CNC made instrument plastic dipped 
is the exact same instrument as the $4,000 CNC made, plastic dipped, guitar looking object. It's the same fucking thing. In fact, the person who bought the $279 instrument, even if they know it or not, made a much better decision than you did who paid 2000 3000 4000 6000 whatever it is for the same fucking instrument if we were going to call it an instrument which we shouldn't and i think it's a thing that is not valued by the average normie uh, guitar enthusiast, guitar consumer. It's not valued by them at all. And that one thing that it offers is it offers an organic instrument. That's what these plastic dipped instruments where they have these different brands on the headstock. It could be PRS, it could be Epiphone, it could be a a name you've never heard of. It could be a Chinese instrument. Well, most of them are Chinese anyway. Or they're Indonesian or they're made in uh, Vietnam now. Or Malaysia. Is it Malaysia or Indonesia? I don't even know where these countries are. But anyway, it doesn't matter what it says on the headstock. It's the same fucking shit. It's the same inorganic sterile plastic dipped oh boy that paint job is so beautiful oh it's so mesmerizing it's it's a metallic pink or whatever one thing that these instruments don't offer is the organic feel the organic element which you psychologically will immediately bond with and that's a huge factor. So the reason people go for vintage instruments is because they bond with these instruments. Because they're organic. They're not playing a fucking kitchen toaster. Okay? Which all these... It doesn't matter what brand they are. It's regardless. It also doesn't matter what price they are. They are all made with the same techniques, the same machinery. The same philosophy, the same materials, with as little human contact as possible. Just like your toaster. It's the same shit. Comes out of the same, you know, four or five companies, uh, factories over there. With people making them that don't even know what they're making. Can't blame them, they have to make a living. And relatively speaking, I think they're making a, a pretty good living comparatively what other people make in the third world. And then you can buy one of these fancy things for $399. Okay? And then there's the other fucking lie where you're being sold a custom shop a reissue vintage instrument for... Four, five, six, ten thousand dollars, and it comes right off of a CNC computerized machine. The same machine which made the two hundred and seventy nine dollar beauty on. <laughs> what a scam! But you know what? They're not at fault. You're the dumb one. You're the fucking dummy. Not, not the dealers. Not the manufacturers. They're just giving you what you believe. They're giving you the lie because you want the lie. Now, what makes a vintage instrument? What makes an organic instrument? Old woods? No. That's a bunch of bullshit. What makes these instruments organic is, yes, somewhat the materials because of the finishing, the finishes used, they didn't dip them in plastic. 
like your bar table, bar top, okay, or your car paint. It's not that. It wasn't like that. It was nitrocellular slacker. And it's not the, what they claim is nitrocellular slacker today. I don't even know how they get away with that lie, with that scam. It's all fucking plastic. You're touching plastic. Shame on you. What makes them organic is the way they were made. You cannot make a vintage instrument. You cannot make a vintage instrument with a computer. It's a complete contradiction. It has to be made by the same methods, the same machinery as the original vintage guitars. They could do it, but they don't have the skill and they don't have the willpower to do it. So they're selling you a CNC made vintage reissue. Absolutely laughable and a scam. That's an absolute joke. It's deception. It's fooling the stupid morons, which you may be one. Okay. They can relic it. The relic it actually makes it better because it makes it more organic. Yeah, think of what relicking does. Think about it. As I mentioned before in previous videos, relicking introduces imperfection to something that's absolutely sterile. So that's a good thing. That's why you play a relic guitar. Because you're body, your soul, viscerally, you crave, not precision, you crave imperfection to make it your own, to feel at home on it, to bond with it, to connect with it. You need imperfection. You know why? Because you're fucking imperfect yourself. That's why. If you're going to buy one of these CNC vintage reissues, <laughs> uh, get a relic, get, buy a relic one. You'll bond to it much better. But what makes a, a vintage instrument is that it was handmade and it was made by hand tools, mostly. Even, I'm, I'm even talking like the power tools. Yes, they, they used uh, mostly power tools, but these power tools were hand guided. Okay. So getting back to this instrument, the first question that I had was, why isn't there a single neck six string guitar version of this double neck? Like, wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be so cool to have it exactly like it is, but a single neck? And of course, I, I didn't get the answer for that. Uh, but I thought it would be so cool. So ever since 1982, I wasn't building guitars in 1982. Uh, I was in university. No, I wasn't in university. I was uh, one year. It was one year before university. And I knew I wanted to build guitars. I knew I was born to build guitars. It was in me. So I dreamed about this instrument. Ever since then, it's been in the back of my mind. And just like last year, I ran across on the internet... I ran across this foldout from this magazine from September 1982. And I said, oh my God, I remember that picture. I was nuts about it. I wanted that so bad. But I'm, I'm not really into double necks. I mean, you know, they have limited use. But boy, would I have loved a single string version of this. Holy shit. Um, so, it always bothered me. I had it in my back of my mind, and I said, well, one day, 
maybe I'm going to build one. So it only took me, I don't know, 30 something, 40 years or whatever the hell it is. Um, and after seeing that picture, uh, in 2019, it brought back all these memories and I said, well, I've got this piece of heavy paduk that I can't really make into a solid body because it'd be too heavy. And I want to revisit the SG shape. And I said, well, clearly, this is the moment. This is the moment to build this elusive instrument. in a single neck six string electric guitar and I'm going to since this piece of wood is heavy I'm going to uh, make it into a uh, semi hollow now this original Gibson double neck which was their first double neck uh, they were making it from 1957 to 62 when the solid body thin heavier Jimmy Page uh, style as we know it double neck took over the SG style in 62 so they were making it from 57 late 57 to 62 and um, it is also a semi-hollow construction, meaning that there's a center block inside there that the bridges screw into, the tailpieces screw into, the pickups underneath the pickups. Um, again, I never seen one of these, never touched one of these. Uh, didn't, uh, you can't look into it because it doesn't have an F hole, but I've never maybe from behind you can look into it maybe there's an opening in behind i've never seen the rear of it um so i don't i have very limited uh, data on the construction of it so i basically had to use my imagination use my artistic uh um liberties here and create something that is uh you know sort of like it and uh, that's what I did and if you notice uh, this original Gibson double neck um, it was very high quality construction this is and and just imagine this was all done without CNC's all without CNC's, the fucking computerized machines, which any dummy uh, can use and become a guitar builder. Any fucking dummy, okay? Uh, and it's better if they if they're machinists and they they know how to work a CNC machine. But it, you know, it doesn't doesn't have anything to do with guitar building because what they do is is these things they have no no contact with humans when they're being made you gotta understand that they are closed and locked into the CNC booth of the machine and six or eight bodies or necks are done at the same time like zzzz, you know everything the pickup cavities the 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 bridge locations the you know the holes the the the, the control holes the neck pockets everything is done and it's, it's a fucking that's not the way it's done here it's done here by pencil and ruler and calculations and drawing it out on the piece of wood okay I have a few jigs not many I have a few tools not many it's all done by hand no consistency they're all good but they're not the same okay 
And that's why these new instruments, they're not even instruments in my, in my opinion. I, I can't even, I, they're, they're gross to me. They're disgusting to me. And I see these uh, YouTube videos from these uh, mega music stores from wherever. Uh, there's a few of them. And they're all pushing this fucking garbage. And uh, it's so deceiving because uh, these sales guys that work for these stores, they are good players. And that's why they have to be good players in order to deceive you. It's just like politics. It's all deception. They're all actors, and they're pushing pushing these things, and uh, you know they're three ninety nine for a for ES three thirty five style guitar, and and uh, fancy this and fancy that, and and uh, it's it's just it's just gross. And the thing is, in the end. You're not getting anywhere. You're not get. You're you're gonna buy an object that's not gonna be inviting to play. That's not gonna have any organic feel to you. As much as you try to deny it, as much as you're experiencing cognitive dissonance, uh, they feel absolutely foreign to you. And you don't like it, and you have no idea why you don't like it. That's why you don't like it. So what are you saving? What are you, you, you can't save when you purchase an instrument, when you purchase a guitar. You can't save money. You get what you pay for. And if you're going to get a reissue, vintage reissue from the custom shop, what they're going to give you is a CNC made body and neck. Okay. And they're going to do a little relicking for you. And there you go. You have your, uh, not even the finish is the same. So you're not getting what you're told you're getting or what you think, or you're dumb enough to think you're getting. Anyway, so I built this instrument, my version of it anyway. And so, here it is. The 203rd guitar that I made. Number 203. So as you can see, there it is. And right away you can see the pickups. Uh, I did my Charlie Christian pickups and I decided I was going to do something new and do it and make a see-through bobbin for them so you can see the coils. See the copper coils? And uh, there you go. So here it is. It's uh, my version of it. semi hollow construction and again what's interesting about this guitar as in the previous uh, Gibson style semi hollow that I did uh, this was one piece of this one board and again what I did is I sliced the top right off the piece of wood. I laminated it over maple veneer. The slice that I sliced off, I glued it onto the maple veneer, as you can see right here. And I glued it right on top. I, I hollowed out, I hollowed out the inside, both sides. And I glued the top, which I sliced off and laminated onto the maple. I glued that right back on in the exact same position. Okay. And that's what you get. 
and I gave it a uh, ebony fingerboard, which is hard to come by these days. So it's all top-notch stuff. You get you get no consistency in having the same guitar one after the other, but you get the consistency with having a high quality workmanship. And I have to compete against computerized machinery in the year 2020. Uh, another interesting part is I usually use wood dots. This is aluminum dots. Okay. Very cool. Aluminum dots and aluminum side dots. Okay. Stainless steel frets. Wide and high to the 16th fret. High but narrower from the 16 all the way up to the 26th fret. This has got 26 frets. Okay. Now on the original uh, double neck that you see in the picture, if you notice, uh, you don't really have very much high fret, ac high fret access because the necks only have, I think, maybe 20 frets on them. And they're also, the neck is moved inward towards the body uh, quite a bit more than the SG that followed it. Uh, had it. The, the SG neck basically hangs right off the body and makes the neck joint extremely weak and it was a it was a real uh, defect with that instrument with the SG. Now they gave it a a bigger heel and and whatever but so this because this has 26 frets I did move the neck more inward but I have a large surface area here for the neck joint so and uh, I put the appropriate vintage style tuners on all black hardware my very special not very special string retainer bar and uh, volume very close to the bridge perfect spot as you're playing, you can always be manipulating the volume knob, either for volume swells or if you're playing um, with overdrive, distortion, whatever, um, high gain amp, whatever, you simply can control the amount of that dis distortion by turning down the volume just a bit. And then it has a tone, master tone, and then the regular three-way switch. Um, this is cool here. Uh, no tailpiece. Strings go through the eyelets. And very simple design, very clean design. You can see the pickups. You can see it. A lot of copper in those pickups. These are heavy pickups because they're 38 gauge thick wire. And this is the back of it. Again, there's a lot of pictures of this on the website on, on its own dedicated web page. And as you can see, the whole thing is made of paduke. One piece quarter sawn paduke neck, uh, which you will not get from these mass producers. Serial number 110719, the 11th day of the 7th month, the year 2019. Oil finish. And you can see the strings through there. Very clean, very clean. You got the four screws and the spike tilt tilt adjustment there it rests on that metal spike not on the wood it's all sculptured here for a very smooth feel this is extremely smooth extremely 
sensuous. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, what is the weight of this thing? I forget the weight of it. Uh, you can, I'm going to play it a little bit and uh, get you an idea of uh, how nicely it plays, how effortlessly it plays, and what it sounds like. And uh, that's about all. It has uh, a 624 millimeter vintage Gibson scale length. Okay. So all those Gibsons from the 50s had that scale length. So you get the same experience. It has the correct Gibson knobs. And the theme has to be harmonious. Okay. No jackass should change these tuners. No jackass should touch this thing because everything is there for a reason and for a purpose. Everything has been thought out. And uh, look at those pickups. Everything on this pickup was handmade. Including these steel rod pole pieces. The magnets are underneath. This is the wiring harness which is inside the guitar and it was a real bitch to put in there let me tell you. I feel sorry for the bastard that has to repair it or <laughs> uh, but anyway nobody should touch this thing especially if you're jackass if you're jackass no touch you'll be doomed you'll go directly to hell and burn there for eternity these are archaic pickups as you can see, the the bridge has a lot more winding on it than the neck does because the bridge has to be hotter uh, than the neck simply because the neck picks up a lot more vibration in this position than the bridge does because the bridge is so closer. Um, uh, the, the bridge pickup is so much closer to the bridge so there is not that much vibration here of the string. So we have to compensate by that by making a hotter pickup. This is not a how to build your own guitar website, but uh, so I shouldn't be telling telling you too much.
So the finished weight of this guitar is only 6.8 pounds. 6.8 pounds and the fingerboard radius is a compound radius with uh, you know the old fender curvature of 7.25 seven and a quarter inches up here and 15 down here from seven and a quarter to 15 inches down here compound radius so you got to understand the thing with handcrafted guitars be it brand new like this one completely handcrafted or be it a uh, vintage instrument that's 30 40 50 60 years old uh, what inconsistency means is variability in measurements imperfection which is part of hand craftsmanship so however it turns out it turns out you know even the fingerboard radius hey if it's going to be 15 inches or if it's going to be 18 inches or if it's going to be 14 inches well that's the way it is right but it's going to feel wonderful it's going to feel great get that brainwashing out of your head all right which these uh, shysters put in your head okay none of them can build a guitar all the big guitar builders you think they are they're not guitar builders okay they're businessmen that's what they are they're not guitar builders be clear on that one so i remember when they were first going to reissue the les paul right they went to uh they, they needed to know how to make the headstock exact see they had forgotten how to make the les paul believe it or not and uh they wanted to know exactly where to place the tuners i was reading this many many years ago so they went to many examples and they took the measurements off of one les paul from the late 50s okay then they went to the other one and the tuners were in a different spot none of them were exact see that's the nature of a handcrafted guitar but it's great it's all great okay you don't need precision in an instrument what you need is imperfection it's counterintuitive but that's what you need imperfection in order to have an organic feeling and emanating guitar so there you go there you go uh, it took me a while but here it is It can be played acoustically. As you can see, it's very loud.